Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you've tuned in. Right. We've got Charlie here from North London. He's making his Porky's Corner debut. How are you doing, Charlie? Yeah, not bad, Ross. You good? I'm all right, mate. Uh, whereabouts in North London are you from? Islington, mate. Islington. Oh, Frank Warren's manor, eh? Old brick top. <laughs> yeah, Arsenal territory. Eh? Arsenal territory. Are you an Arsenal fan? Are you an Arsenal There's fan? only one team in North London, mate. Arsenal. Do you know when I lived in London, when I was a teenager, uh, I worked in Cricklewood uh, uh, at a place called AO Leisure. I used to deliver fruit machines. I was only a teenager. And Arsenal were 20-odd points we had at Liverpool, but Liverpool had a few games in hand because I'm a Liverpool fan. And mm. they clawed it back and it went to the last game of the season and they, they, they went up to Anfield and won, didn't they? 2-0. Yeah, and and they ended up signing Mitchell Thomas, didn't they? Oh, wait, Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas, Liverpool yeah, signing yeah, yeah. a few, few years later. Yeah, but, so I'm not an Arsenal fan, mate. <laughs> when, Michael, when, Michael Owen, when Michael Owen destroyed him in 2001 FA Cup final, I were buzzing, but they weren't even in game that day, were they? But Owen, no, really not at all. We've dropped. Hey, we dropped off now, sadly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, well, who's your favourite boxer then, uh, Charlie? Who's your favourite boxer? Yeah, you know what it was. It was Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah. Um, up until he beat David Lemieux, and then he dropped off for a bit, didn't he? Obviously, after a uh, drug ban. Mm. And since then, it's probably been Usyk. To be honest, I followed him since he beat Glowacki for the world title. Mm. And obviously, since then, he won every belt at cruiserweight. Won the tournament, gone up to heavyweight, and I man, think he beats Chisora he? next week. And he's Who sex your man is he? Big time. I think he wins next weekend in style, Russ. Dear. Hmm. You've got some questions for me, aren't you? Yeah, mate. Straight into it. Straight so into obviously we've got the pay per view next weekend. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Would you rate it? At Would I what? What do you rate next? Next Saturday's pay per view out of ten. Obviously, we've got U six Chisora main event. <sighs> what do I rate out of ten? Who's on? Who's on? U six Chisora. U six had one fight at heavyweight. It's not for a title. Mm. And Chisora's got nine losses, so it's a good Saturday night fight, isn't it? But pay per view, come on. No, no, it's not pay per view for me. Who's chief support? Savannah Marshall, Anna Rankin, eight and zero against the what? Eight and four, is it? Savannah Marshall blows her away uh, mm -hmm. as she wins a world title, but there's there's hardly anybody to pick to get a world. You can get a world title easily if you're a woman boxer now, can't you? If you've got a promoter behind you. And then what's the other fight yeah. on there that's a decent, the, the, the big enough? You know, Dave Allen, again, <laughs> who's never won a belt against a guy 19 and 0, 19 knockouts, but 18 of them have got losing records including the last 16 after his third fight. So this guy is ranked 444 on box rec, but all of a sudden he's been slipped in at number 15 in the WBA rankings. Mm -hmm. So Dave Allen steps in and whips this chump. He could be a volunteer for, that, for Anthony Joshua. I know people will scoff at that, but if Dave Allen beats him, he could be a voluntary for Anthony Joshua with the WBA and nobody will be able to bat an eyelid because rules are rules. He's in the top mm. 15 if he beats this guy. And you have to be a mandatory, don't you, to get a certain shot. But if you're in top 15, that can be a voluntary. So Dave mm. Allen could be in a world title fight if he beats this guy. I know that sounds crazy and you might think I'm talking rubbish, but I'm not. And that's the talk up here in Doncaster at the moment. If Dave beats this guy, he'll get a massive fight. It might be a WBA fight, not Joshua. It might be for the other belt, the regular, or it might be some a bit better. Who knows? It could be Tyson Fury. Who knows? But then he'd have to have yeah. a ranking with WBC, so I don't know how they'd work that. But 
Oh, it's possible. It's boxing, isn't it? It's the wild, wild west. If he beats this guy and gets to rank him with WBA top 15, I'm sure the WBC could easily slip Dave Allen in top 15. It's just what goes on. It's called lobbying. So I don't agree with it. Yeah. But it is what it is, isn't it? Or it is what it isn't. <laughs> so yeah. I don't... The show, so I, give got, it, um... I give it a six out of ten. Six out of ten. Yeah. Could be barnstormers, I mean, couldn't they, uh, Charlie? Hmm. You, you say that, Russ. I mean, you got Tommy McCarthy, European title. I don't particularly rate him. It could be a good fight. You know, cruiserweight European title. You got Lee Selby against that kid from New Zealand, Cambozo. I can't see that being much of a fight, if I'm honest, Russ. You won't, you won't go to a fight with Lee Selby on if tickets were given to you, if you were comped, would you? You won't go, would you? How many people are sat at home now and they're saying, Lee Selby's on that card. We must see this. I'm going to watch that because Lee Selby's on it. Outside of Lee, Lee Selby's circle, you don't hear people. If you ask somebody in the street, who's Lee Selby? They go, Z. If you ask somebody in the street, who Dave Allen is, they'll go, oh, the white rhino, Mr. Humble. So that's just how it's going, isn't it, boxing at the moment? Any, 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 anything is possible in it, I suppose. But, you know, what, what, what can you do? What can you do? It's, uh, yeah, it's I thought it'd be better than that. It's what, mate? I thought it would be better than that. I mean, I don't expect much from Matram these days, but, I mean, that is quite poor. Lee Selby, Dave Allen's opponent, and Tommy McCarthy. And Savannah Marshall fight would be good. I'm looking forward to that. But she'll just blow her away, wouldn't she? Savannah Mar listen, I'll be putting a big bet on Savannah Marshall to win by KO. If Savannah Marshall don't win by KO, there'll be a lot of people disappointed, so she'll knock her out. And there's a lot of people putting a lot of money on her to win by knockout. We're not just going for a straight win, it's it'll be a knockout. So Anna Rankin shouldn't even be in the same ring as her. It's, it's a bit embarrassing, really. But the, I'm, I'm happy for Savannah, she'll get a world title and she, and she and she's she's deser she's deserving of it. She's deserving of, of some success because she's waited and waited. So, yeah. Does she beat Clarissa Shields? She's beat her once already. She's bigger, stronger, punches harder, longer reach, taller. Why not? She's making a lot of noise, Clarissa Shields, but I don't see it. I don't see her wanting to fight Savannah, but they'll, they'll make that fight soon, yeah. They'll make it soon. Joe, that's, that's one woman's fight I've really looked forward to. Yeah, it's the only woman's fight that we really want to see. All the rest of them are pure garbage, aren't they? I mean, tell me a woman's fight other than that that you want to see. Maybe Harper Jonas, but I don't think Steffi Ball wants that fight. Well, that's what I'm hearing back. You don't fancy it. They want to go a different route. So there aren't any other fights that I, I, I lay in bed at night and I think, well, that's a good fight for a woman's fight. No, not even Katie Taylor against. Maybe Katie Taylor, yeah. Maybe Katie Taylor against Chantal. Chantel Cameron, but she blows Chantel Cameron away, I think. Blows her away. And I think uh, Savannah blows this girl away at weekend, Anna Rankin, with ease. With ease. So, what other question? Definitely, mate. I agree. I agree. So that's a six out of ten for. Well, Joe, I was going to jump on. Six out of ten. I was going to jump on Dave Allen's opponent, actually. I mean, He's gone from fighting Christian Hammer, who's European level, to fighting Lovejoy, who's probably wouldn't even have him English level or area level, would you? Even area level, the guy had, Tyson Fury sparred him, and there's other people that have sparred him and say he's garbage now. What I will say is the guy's had 19 fights in T Tijuana, Mexico. He's never fought outside Tijuana. There's no footage of any of these fights. They could just be writing anything down, couldn't they, on these uh, on these sheets of paper and handing them in. His box wreck, as I've just said, 444 for a reason. He is the 444th best in the world. But all of a sudden, he's got a WBA top 15 ranking. So Dave beats him, he takes that ranking, doesn't he? It's a gift, isn't it? Do you see where I'm coming mm. from? It's a gift. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, talking of heavyweights as well, Russ, obviously Tyson Fury's announced his homecoming for December. 
I'm seeing him being linked to fighting Oscar Rivas, Takam, Caballero. Do you think it would be any of them three? Or do you think it could be a worse opponent than that? I think it'll be Dave Allen if he beats Lovejoy. Yeah, it'll be Dave Allen. Dave will go into full Dave Allen mode. He'll have sit down with Coogan, Rob Tebbert, and he'll be working the room and doing the Instagram. And I think it'll be Dave Allen, Tyson Fury. And if Dave can get a few quid out of job with Tyson, why not? He should have had some money from the bar fight, shouldn't he? But what are you going to see this week now? You're going to see Allen Mania, and you're going to see... Eddie Earn, Adam Smith, Johnny Nelson, Bellew, uh, Darren Barker, Spencer Oliver, Matthew Macklin, they're all going to come out and they're going to say that Christopher Lovejoy is a 37-year-old ice man. That's <laughs> what they're going to say. 19 and 0, 19 knockouts. He's a scary guy, isn't he? But when you scratch the surface... 57 wins are their, all his opponents. That's all they've got between 19 of them. They've got 57 wins and nearly 200 losses. So it's garbage when you just scratch the surface. It averages at three, 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 three wins, 11 losses, and a draw apiece if you average it out. That is utter garbage. So how's he got a top 15 ranking? And this is the problem that we've got with sanctioning bodies. They're doing what they want. It's the wild, wild west. It's like... Rico we mentioned the other day, Trevor Bryant, you remember him, Don King's fighter. How would he number one rank? Yeah. Ages? I mean, and this Lovejoy, he shouldn't be in the top 15 ranking, but he's come over to England and, you know, he's going to fight Dave Allen, but Dave Allen ices him inside three rounds, jump on, jumps on ring apron and calls out Tyson Fury. People may scoff at that, but he's just beat, after he knocks him out inside three rounds, the the form book says Dave Allen knocked the fifteenth best heavyweight out in the world. That's what that's mm. what it will say. People can say he's lucky, is this blah blah blah, but you make your own luck in life, don't you? So we wish him well. But this just shows you that if you're funny on social media and play Mr. Humble, this is where you can get. You don't need to go. Dave Allen's booked the trend. You don't need an area belt, an English, a British, a Commonwealth, a European. You just make you send funny on Insta and go be a world ranked guy that ain't world ranked, but he's been slipped in as world ranked. This is how messed up it is. The wild, wild west. I'm expecting Wyatt Earp coming out of the corner in a minute to shoot me because we're in wild, wild west now. This is craziness. Uh, and you've got another question at me, and you for me about Saunders Murray. Yeah, I've been talking a shocking card for us. I mean, I was a big, I'll tell you, I was a big Martin Murray fan a few years back. I've met him; he's a top bloke. Read his book, mm. but thirty-eight years old, fifth attempt at a world title, well, losing to Endam a few years back. He got, should be nowhere near a world title fight. No, listen, this is how I look at it, right? Billy for Joe Saunders training with Mark Tibbs and I wish them all the best but and I've, I've told Mark Tibbs this I said I can't defend that fight but if there's no belt on line I can defend it because they're both being, inact both being inactive aren't they Billy's being inactive and so is Martin Murray so if there's no belt on the line I'm happy with that fight what spoils it is the belt being on the line because it's undeserving of Martin Murray to get a title shot and Billy shouldn't be defending his world title against him. He should park it up, and then they don't have to pay a sanctioning fee to the WBO. But mm. what you've got is you've got a Coley in a in a cruiserweight world title fight, aren't you? And you've got yeah. Anthony Joshua is not going to want to have a mandatory against Usyk, is he? Because he's want to going to want the Fury fight. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Eddie's going to want to keep the WBO suite. So if you're keeping the WBO suite with sanctioning fees for Billy's fight and a Coley's fight, when you call a favour in with WBO, then you say, yeah, can you just call that fight with Joshua and Usek for mandatory? Or Chisora if he beats Usek. Can you just park that out for a few extra months or for a bit of time if we see you right? Because we're going to want to put Joshua Fury on. And that's how it works. Otherwise, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Why would Billy be giving sanctioning fees to WBO off his purse? 
when he doesn't need to because he, mm. Martin Murray's not deserving of this title shot, is he? But Martin Murray's been slipped in the rankings, hasn't he, last, uh, recently? He's just been slipped in the rankings. And that's just how mm. it works. They slipped him in and he's going to make most of his opportunity. But I don't see a Martin Murray win. I see Billy Joe Saunders beating him 12 rounds to none on points in a schooling and, 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 it, and it being a tune-up fight. But Billy's saying he needs a tune-up and Martin Murray is saying, we're saying he was inactive a bit back. Well, don't put the belt on the line then. Don't put it online and don't discredit a world title belt. Although for years nobody rated the WBO belt, but don't discredit the belt. Martin Murray is he's English level now, isn't he? English level now. Martin Murray, if you put him in with Willie Hutchinson or Lerone Richards, he get beat. He get beat. And they're 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 probably English stroke British level. You get beat, Martin Murray. You'll get beat. So, but he's in a world title fight. How's that come about? Is it because Martin Murray and um, well, Billy's with MTK. Is Martin Murray with MTK? I'm not sure. He might be, but it's poor from WBO and it's poor from everybody involved. But take the belt away, and I'm behind the fight. So, because that's the thing, Martin Murray was he was with Matram. Then he went to NTK. Then he went to Frank Warren. And, you know, he was saying over lockdown on IFL, he was talking about retiring. And now all of a sudden he's in a world title fight headlining on Sky with Eddie Hearn again. So, yeah. but it'll be his last fight, won't it? Chris, he'll lose, won't it? Uh, yeah, it'll, it, well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you, you tell me. I don't know, mate. You tell me. The, the, these people, they just keep retiring and coming back. Dave Allen retired. He said he was a tiny old rider and he'd not been right for 18 months. Blah, blah, blah. That was after David Price punched him upside down. But he's fought Dorian Darch and now he's fighting a top 15 world rank guy. So boxers say things and do things, don't they, for effect, don't they? And they say things for for uh, the mo whatever comes into the red at the moment. Don't forget, when you've got a camera pushed in your face, in a dressing room after a fight, you've just been punched about all over. You're not yourself, are you? You know, once the dust settled, has settled, a lot of people probably think, oh, I wish I'd not said that. But when you're getting your brain scrambled, it's hard and it's an hard sport. But it is where it isn't. So, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, speak, I was going to ask you that as well, Ross. I mean, speaking of uh, Martin Murray going from Matram to Frank Warren, do we reckon a big meet is going to happen between the both, Ern and Warren? I reckon what? Do you reckon that meeting's going to happen with Frank and Eddie? No, no, no. They'll never, never happen, mate. Well, they don't need to meet, do they? Why can't they just do it on Zoom like we're doing? I mean, they keep saying they're innovative. Do it on Zoom. I'll do it on a the phone. They don't need to meet in person to make a fight, do you? How do they think people like Bob Arum go on and Frank Warren? Bob Arum don't fly over to England and Frank over to Vegas every two minutes. They just get on the phone, don't they, and make a fight. All this is about let's meet for mm -hmm. lunch and this and that. It's all a load of... It's, look, they're just paying fans lip service. Frank Warren's offered put 10 fights to him and said, look, 10 of my guys are against 10 of your guys. Here's the list. And Eddie Earns going, oh, I'm going away for a holiday. Look, they don't want to give him... He said he didn't want to give him a leg up. Frank Warren's gone cap in hand, hasn't he, because he's probably needs Eddie more than Eddie needs him. And that, that's just basically it. They're not, they're not work together. Three fights in 10 years they've done, right? That's it. The Holy Grail is Fury Joshua, right? That might be the only one they'll do, and they might do it twice, but I won't hold your breath on that. But if you're going to do three fights in 10 years, there's a problem, isn't there, between you? Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like yeah. if you're married to somebody and you're separated for 10 years and you go around and pop around and see her three times in 10 years. Still, It's still not the same as living with a person, is it? So as far as I'm mm. concerned, no, nah, I don't think I don't think Eddie wants to do it. I think Frank maybe might, but there's too many egos involved and that's the problem we've got. Three fights in 10 years. Frankie Gavin, Skeet, Eggington, Skeet, John Ryder, Saunders, that's it. That is it. So, mm. 
three in ten years. If there's any more, let me know. I don't think there is. Three in ten no. years. 120 months worth of boxing. They could have had one. They could have had one every three months, four a year for ten years. That's 40 fights. But we've had three, so where's the other 37? Couldn't we? Am I right? So that's just my opinion anyway. What do I know? I mean, the thing is now, I mean, there's talks of Dana White coming into boxing and it'd be interesting to see what he's going to do. And he'll probably have some sort of relationship with Eddie Hearn because they've spoke before, haven't they? I know Eddie Hearn's been to his UFC camp in Vegas a couple of times and Eddie Hearn they were talks of... Uh, He'd be frightened to death of him coming over, so he'd befriend him at first, like he befriended Al Eamon, then he went after him. Uh, Eddie will be frightened to death if Dana White comes into boxing, so he'll want to pal him up. But I don't know, we're going to see, aren't we? I mean, Eddie Earn keeps telling us he's Mr. Relentless, but I don't see any of it lately. All I see is somebody promoting himself and not his fighters. So, you know, books out. Definitely, I mean... Definitely. I mean, there's so many good British fighters like, you know, Joe Cordina, Martin Ward, Josh Warrington. Yeah, I could sit here all night and go. Callum like, Smith, B.P. Smith, Josh we're, Warrington, yeah. We're not seeing any of them in fights, are we? Why isn't Kid Galahad screaming for his fight with Josh Warrington? Because hasn't the 90 days expired now where they, had to, they were going to have to call the fight or something? I'm sure that that's yep. expired now, hasn't it? So why isn't Kid Galahad screaming blue murder from, from, from top of hills, shouting and bawling, ranting and raving, screaming and shouting? Why? Well, the, the time mm. limit's lapsed, hasn't it, for the world title fight with Warrington? Because he's the mandatory guy, isn't he, Galahad? So why is he not ranting? Who's talking behind the scenes saying, look, just hold your horse as well? Why? Why aren't we having Josh Warrington stripped and Galahad fighting the number two guy for it? Why not? Because... That's you know, that's a good fight to make in, in the current uh, situation. What, Warrington Galahad? I think so. It's a shit fight, mate. Who'd pay to watch that after the first one? Galahad stunk place out. No. But that's what I mean. To have it on normal Sky Sports, not pay-per-view. Yeah, but who'd want, to, who'd want to watch that on normal Sky Sports? It's a stinker. I've, I've, when have you ever seen Galahad, Galahad in a good fight? When do you say, hey, I need to get home quick, sharpish, kid Galahad's fighting? Nobody buys tickets to watch him. He's awful. Awful style. He's a technician. He doesn't engage. He's like a surgeon type, isn't he? He doesn't want to engage. He just stays out of range all the time. And who'd want to pay to watch him? Who goes to yeah. keep Galahad fights and says, come on, we're going to have a right night tonight? No, you go to your Ricky Atten fights, your Frotch fights, your Ward Gatties, don't you? Eggington, Cheeseman, fights like that. You don't say, oh, let's go to a Galahad fight, do you? Do you know anybody who says, let's go to a Galahad fight? No. So why is Galahad cool. not screaming? Is, go on. The, the thing is, most of my mates are casuals, right? If I mentioned Kid Galahad to them, they'd think he's a fucking magician or something. Do you know what I mean? Magician? Well, why ain't he got a following? Is no, that... I meant magician is in in random bloke. Like they wouldn't have a clue who he is. Oh yeah, well he's had to go the 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 rankings route and the mandatory route to get fights because no promoters are interested in him, are they? And there's there's going to be no ticket sales. So Warrington's. Sort of created a, a rod for his own back and he's selling out arenas. Now he's no good to Eddie Earn because because there's no there's nobody buying tickets, is there? But if you did put that fight on again, and you and and we were allowed to go watch it, who'd want to watch it again anyway? Nobody want to watch it. Mm. One it may as may as well just throw a belt in, honey, and, and and fight for another belt or something. I don't know, but I thought Warrington Edge first one, but. It were a stinker. It were awful to watch. And he didn't cover his sin in glory, Gala. I'd fighting like that. And I, I don't want to watch that again, me. I, I can't get behind that. And it definitely won't be pay-per-view. But Galahad's not a pay-per-view fighter. Maybe Warrington isn't right fight against somebody like Stevenson or some top American or but but no, I don't I don't want to see Galahad Warrington too, do you? 
Definitely don't want to see it. I mean, I want to see Josh Warrington, as you just said. Him yeah, like I do. Yeah, he's exciting, Josh Warrington. And I'd like to see him, you know, in a, in a good fight. I'd like to see uh, him fight somebody local around here. Uh, but probably Josh Wales probably going to need a couple of more wins to get it mixed with something like that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and get and get a get a ranking. But I'd like to see them fight one day. But and I think that's a good fight because they'd be they'd be in pocket going at it. But I don't want to see Kid Gallard I, I, when he's on telly. Kid Gallard, you know what I do? I turn telly off. And I'm supposed to be hardcore. I turn the telly off and and then I turn it back on when I know it's finished. I know that's harsh and that, and he's put his time in, but he's got an awful style. He's like, it's awful, his style. It's not for me. It's not what I like to watch, but it is what it is. Speaking of Josh, well, what uh, plans has Dennis got with a pandemic? Is he going to uh, have any work, shows? I don't work with Dennis at the moment. There is something planned, uh, but I, I'm not going to say on here because it's their business now, but there is something planned, yeah. And it's all it's the look it's okay. close at the moment, but it's not for me to say now because I don't work with Dennis. Okay, mate, nice one. Fair play. So um obviously coming up, you got Dylan White for Vetkin, yeah. Anthony Joshua Pula for Pula for the heavyweights. Let's start White for Vetkin, repeat or revenge. White gets beat again by knockout, gets knocked out again. I think Povetkin's got his number. I think them two knockdowns that Dylan White knocked Povetkin down, they were flash knockdowns. And and I think Dylan knew that. That's why he didn't jump on him. He knew they were just flash knockdowns. That's mm-hmm. why he never jumped on him. Uh, I think that they were lucky. And I don't think Povetkin will get dropped again. But Povetkin knows he can hurt him. and that He knows that he's wide open. And I think that Povetkin knocks him out again. If he goes to points, Povetkin won't go a decision in UK. No chance. You've seen how bad it is, haven't you, lately? We're mm. New Germany, aren't we? But I see it happening again. I see Povetkin icing him. And I see Dylan White then going around with begging ball for Joshua fight. That's what I do. Well, I mean, I, I, personally, I think in this fight, I think Dylan White's going to get, get on the run for 12 rounds and try and nick it. Well, well, like Joshua did in Saudi. Stink the place out on Definitely. a pay per view. Well, that's what they're about, aren't they? Them, aren't they? They think of money more than fans, don't they? We, if he did that, you know, we'd have to call Dylan White the stinkinator. <laughs> mm, the stinkinator. Not the can man. The can man. The can, anyone who wants, wants it can get it. Well, Joshua wanted it at Wembley. For, for, for four belts and he couldn't get it because she knocked it back so it's the can't man Dylan can't man white <laughs> where's Dean White no, where are you Dean White where are you when are you going to come out with your birth certificate oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a fuck joking it's not banter no I mean it where's your birth certificate running around saying you're somebody else Jesus get a grip don't come in my company talking like that. So I don't have any of that, mate, in my company. I'm sorry, mate, but I just had it today. I bumped into somebody. Um, you know, <laughs> again, it all that. <laughs> well, it's somebody I've, I've, it's actually somebody I were in jail with. And he was all right, actually, when he were in jail, but you're getting it all that blood, you know, push, pumping, fist yeah. up in petrol station. That's a lot. Don't be coming near me, giving it all that blood. You know, yeah, man. I don't prove any of that. So look, mate, you're from Balby. Stop doing that. You're not from. You're not a yardie. Stop it. But uh, we we wish Dylan White all the best. And I used to like Dylan White, but I just thought he got up his own ass a bit, in, and then he didn't treat Mark Tibbs well, did he? And you know, I'm I'm Team Mark Tibbs, and I like him. He's proper, and I don't I don't like. Uh, people that discard trainers, especially when they're unbeaten with the trainer. There's nothing broke, so why get rid? Why why try and fix something that's not broke? Do you know what I mean? For example... Definitely. Tyson, for example, Tyson... It's class. For example, Tyson Fury, he never got dropped uh, while Peter were in his corner, did he? Now, they obviously have gone separate ways, but... 
he's been dropped, hasn't he, since he's been we. Uh, he got dropped twice against Wilder and he got cut bad against Otto Walling, didn't he? But he never had that when Peter were in corner. So that's how I look at it. But it is what it is, isn't it? You know, people fall out and move on, don't they? And But we wish Dylan White all the best. He's a fighter putting his sen in the mix. But he's not fought for a European title yet, has he? But he's on his sixth pay-per-view next month. Let me just say that. Six. Six pay-per-views on Sky next month. Carl Frotchard, three. And go and look at his CV compared to Dylan White's. Horrific is the word. But, as I've said before, and I'm going to say it again, this generation of fighters now, you look at their CVs, it's totally different to back it to back in the day. Uh, mm. In fact, I'm going to read you some out here that I jotted down on my phone. Read you some out here, and I'm going to show you how times have changed. In fact, I don't even need to turn it on. A bit of an hour turning that on. Uh, look at look how many world champions Tyson Fury has beat. Three. How many Bell you beat? Four. How many is Groves beat? Four. How many De Gale beat? Is it three? How many Callum Smith beat? Three. How many Billy Joe beat? Three or two, is it? Three, I think. Compare that to your Amir mm. Khan's Carl Zaggi's Frotch. The three and four times more Lennox Lewis than that. These people were fighting people, weren't they? These people were fighting mm. people. Frotch, Carl Zaggi, Amir mm -hmm. Khan, Lennox Lewis. Compare their, their records to this generation now. Look at Clinton Woods and Robin Reeds. And go, go look at... Uh, what what we've got now. Look at Callum Smith and Billy Joe. Josh won it and he's only beat three, and he three or four world champions. I think it's three. These guys, yeah, they're undefeated, but they're not having that, they're not they're not pushing the sense, are they, in my opinion. <clears throat> I don't think Josh Warrington's got out of third gear yet. <coughs> or Billy Joe or Callum Smith. They're all world champions and they're all from Britain, but you haven't, when have we seen him in a fight where we've gone, fucking hell, they could get beat here? We haven't, have we? Maybe you could say the, the Frampton one, maybe against uh, Frampton against Warrington. Maybe that could have been a 50 50, but Frampton, uh, he wants this Frampton of, of previous. But I want to see these people take a risk. I want to see Billy Joe in a fight with Canelo. Or somebody better than who he's fighting. I want to see Callum Smith in a fight with John Ryder and then maybe go fight at Canelo. I want to see him take risks. Lennox mm. Lewis did, like I just said. You know, all them top guys from that era did. But this era, it's the era where the, Tyson Fury is right. He's not had a defence of a belt yet, has he? A world title belt. He's not defended a belt yet. But he's bigger than boxing now, isn't he? Because of social yeah. media. Joshua's beat five world champions, but they were all hand-picked, weren't they? Hand-picked. For example, Charlie Martin. That were a hand-picked opponent. One of the strategy behind the scenes to get yeah. the belt off Fury and Mick Hennessy. Charlie Martin. Then you've got Povetkin, an old man. Vladimir, they brought him back after 18 months on the city and Tyson Fury schooled him. Took him to university. You know, Andy Ruiz, he, he filled Joshua in. And then they fought, and Joshua fought like a frightened rabbit in rematch. Parker fight were a stinker, wasn't it? Referee spoiled it. So these were all hand picked fights on home turf with home referee and home judges. If Joshua didn't knock Vladimir out in that round, he would have still won on points anyway, but loads of people had him losing. So everything's stacked in your favour. When we did see Joshua in a fight where he would put on him, he lost. And then when we thought that was going to happen at rematch, the kid didn't turn up in shape. But they've not gone nowhere near Wilder. And they the still haven't made the Fury fight, they're talking about it. But it's just to keep them earning, isn't it? But what about having some legacy and a bit of pride with these fighters now? Let's have some legacy and let's have some pride. Do you know what I mean? That's what I want to see. I want to see Josh Wannington against somebody in America, a top, top fight. Then we can say he's an all-time great because he's cleaned up at domestic level. He's beat world champions. He's got all belts. 
Uh, is it, what's he got? English, British, Commonwealth, European, World. Beat, what, three or four world champions. So let's see Josh Warrington get a big fight in America and then we'll call him an all-time great because he could do it. Let's see Callum Smith defend his ring magazine belt against somebody worthwhile instead of, you know, who he's been fighting. Another one that's handpicked. Liam Smith's been a former world champion, but he's not beat a world champion. So how can we call him a former world champion? Because he got gifted a vacant, didn't he, when he was with Frank Warren? Yes. Yeah. Liam Smith in a, in a well, he's fought Canelo, hasn't he? but let's see him in, in a rematch with Liam Williams at middleweight. You know, if Liam Williams gets about, let's see some fights. Let's not see fighters not taking risks. Let's see Billy Joe fight Triple G. We're calling him out five years ago in Canelo. Well, we're still waiting, Billy Joe. We're still waiting for these fights. It's the era of people not taking risks because they, they all want to get a few quid and be known as a champ. That's what I, that's my opinion anyway. I just think that boxing shoots its any foot too much. I think that Joe, I had a look on Box Rec earlier. And I think the best British fighter in the last three years, you've probably got to say Josh Warrington. Do you know the record of his last five opponents? Josh Warrington? No, I don't, but he's beat uh Carl Gallagher, had he won a world champion. He's beat Frampton uh Selby, he's beat Martinez, hasn't he? Did he, did he beat another yeah. one? I think he beat another one as well. I think he's beat yeah. four of them. Who? Ceylon. Ceylon. It might be him, I'm not sure, but I think he's beat four world champions. Look, however, Josh, Josh Warrington is still 29 year old. He's 30 and 0. He's, beat, he's done everything asked of him. People should be bending over backwards to give him a pay-per-view slot in the right fight. He might have to go to Vegas to get a, to get a big fight, but... If he does, people should be bending over backwards for this for this kid. Do you know what I mean? But I don't see his name mentioned. I don't see Callum Smith's name mentioned. You know, uh, Beefy Smith signed with Matchroom. All he's had is egging. All he's all he's done is fight Eggington. They, they've parked Beefy Smith up, haven't they? Eddie Hearn's made a lot of promises. He promised Anthony Tomlinson to get him on a show. He hadn't put yeah. him on a show. There's, there's a lot of chat going on. There's a lot of chatty patties. A lot of people talking a lot of shit and not delivering. It's jobs for the boys. They're looking after the favourites. That's what they're doing. All the favourites are getting looked after and all the favourite trainers are getting their fighters out. But there's a lot of people out in the cold. But who do you think's most impro most improved fighter in the last 12 months that's not a world champion? Sure, most improved last 12 months, British fighter. Fucking hell, who'd I, pick, who'd I put on there? I'd pick Liam Williams and Maxi Hughes. That's who I'd sure. it, it probably is him. So, I mean, Liam Williams, since he's gone to Dominic Ingle, he's been a lot better, is not he? He looks a right full stand at middleweight. Hmm. And there's talks of it. Is he mandatory for Andrade still? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, that's the fight I want to see. You know, Maxi Hughes, the wins he's picked up lately, beating John O'Carroll yeah. and the other lads he's beat. But you know, again, going back to Liam Williams, I, I, I really want to see that fight with Andrade. I'd have him as a, you know, I'd have him as an underdog, but a live underdog. Yeah. I think I just think Andrade, he's got a tough style to beat. You know, what is he? Six foot, six one at the weight. He's got that style with any point scoring. Yeah. They keep him at a uh, distance for the but I want to see Liam Williams in with someone like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. I'd like to see Liam Williams step up, but what worries me about Liam Williams is I've only ever seen anybody get stuck into him a couple of times, and that was Liam Smith. And I, I, I thought he were he didn't like it. He, he seems to me like an on top fighter. I want to see him get tested. I want to see him get tested in a fight, Liam Williams, where he's not having it all his own way. Instead of just blowing guys yeah. up. Uh, Andrew Robinson, was, were, Liam Williams was 66 to one on to beat Andrew Robinson. He blew him away inside a round. That's not a test. Mm. Who sanctioned that fight? Border control. Shame on you. But uh, 66 to one on. You put 66 quid on, you win a quid. One round demolition job. So the bookies got it right, didn't they? But I want to see him in a fight with somebody. In a fight with somebody. 
Let's see him fight Golovkin at middleweight. Forget Andrade. Let's see him fight Golovkin. Let's see him fight somebody that's going to hit him back. Somebody we, yeah. you know what I mean? But you know, but I think I think there's, there's potential for him to win a world title. Oh, yeah, if he's matched correctly. Uh, he, his game's changed. He looks a lot fitter and since he's gone to Dominic Ingles, so we have to tip us out to Dominic. And I give Dominic stick on here because, you know, he's had three fighters fail dope tests and I think if he has a fourth, that he should be run out at sports. But that won't happen, will it, Dominic? But, uh, you know, I, I think Max Hughes has done well since he's gone to Sean O'Hagan. He's done really good. You know, yeah. and Maxi Hughes is probably doing well because there's no fans in arena, so there's no pressure on him, is there? A lot of people struggle with fans in arena. Who's out? Dave Allen might be world class when he fights this guy next week because there's no fans in arena, there's no pressure, is there? And we're seeing a few results that are shocking, us, aren't we? So we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. I was going to ask you that, Ross. Do you think. Uh... Obviously, we've still got, probably for the short and long term, no fans in venues. Do you think we'll still continue seeing some of these results, upsets? Yeah, I do, yeah. I do, yeah. I think we'll see... Uh, I think we'll yeah. see some surprise results. We might see some next weekend. <laughs> what, 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 we, what we want Sorry. next weekend, Charlie, is we want no judging mess-ups. All eyes are going to be on Ian John Lewis, Terry O'Connor, if he's there. <coughs> Victor Laughlin, Michael Alexander, Howard Foster. All eyes are going to be on them. And they're going to have to not be biased. And they know that they're being watched now because people are sick of it now, aren't they? Did you see the Robert Smith interview on IFL? How pompous and arrogant were that? Robert Smith, I hope you're watching your shit house. How arrogant was that? They were more or less saying, look, who are you to question us? Well, this is what they need to do. They need to get Terry O'Connor on a Zoom with, with me and he needs to explain to me how, how, how he scored that fight like that. That's all. That's all I want. Put it in public domain why you scored that fight and put it in public domain what you were holding in your hand because it looked like yeah. a phone. Don't tell us now it were an electronic score scorecard thing. And what well, is it? Did you see that interview with Johnny Nelson and Coogan where they were defending Terry O'Connor? They soon changed the tune, didn't they? 72 hours afterwards, didn't they? Do you know what I mean? Disappointing. Disappointing. Very disappointing. I mean, as you said, there'll be a lot of attention on him. But you know what? Looking at next week, the only fight I can see against a kid from New Zealand, I think Usyk stops Chizora. I think Savannah Marshall stops ranking. Dave Allen, an ISAP bloke from America. Well, that's and three I think, knockouts um, there. You've got three knockouts there in yeah. your simulator, haven't you? And Tommy McCarthy fight, whether it's him or the other kid, that won't go the distance. So hopefully the judges have an easy weekend next week. Yeah, well, three, there's three knockouts there, isn't there? Savannah Marshall will win by knockout. Oh, second, Dave Allen. So there's that's three out. Is it five or six that are on? Well, you've got three knockouts there. That's a treble. Yeah. A porky treble yeah. there for you. Just get a porky treble on 20 to what? Uh, sorry, 20 quid. <laughs> take the odds, wherever it is, that all them three win by knockout and you'll probably get yourself a few quid. Pay for your weekend's booze and uh, whatnot. Well, that's an, it's easy money. That's free money, that. <laughs> Whatever else. Do, do you think Usyk definitely stops Chisora then? Yeah, I do, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Chisora's a shot fighter. He'll empty his tank by round eight, Chisora, like he normally does. And then Usyk will just gather all the data and then he'll he'll figure him out by then. Because he's a pretty come forward sort of pugging it like that. You know what I mean? Poor man's Joe Fraser, isn't he? He comes bobbing and weaving, you know, you know giving it all that. But. No, Usyk's a surgeon and he'll take him apart. He'll blood him. Right? People go on about him moving up to heavyweight. I know it was back in the amateurs, but I think people forget what Usyk done to, you know, someone, you know, remember when he uh, boxed Joe Joyce? Joe Joyce. He, no, I'm not, again, I know it was in the amateurs. But... 
Him, yeah, I've seen it in World Boxing Super, that uh, tournament thing where they had head guards off, didn't they? Yeah. He, he just, he made Joyce look stupid, didn't he? He made him look like Frankenstein. So, cause he's like Frankenstein, isn't he? <laughs> no, he is. He, he moves is, but... like Frankenstein, doesn't he? He's like, ugh, ugh. He's, Frankenstein, that's what they call him, isn't it? Right, Jim's down south. Frankenstein, yeah. and Usek just surgeon jobbed him, didn't he? Dr. Usek. So, but we, that's what he does, mate. And I, I think as well, the, the, the crowd really get behind his aura, as you know, the, at the O2 and that. And when there's no atmosphere there and the crowd aren't backing him, I just think after six rounds, I think Chisora will give up pretty much. I think, as you said, they lent his tank by round eight. And I think by round, yeah, mid to late rounds, Usyk could just take over and finish it. How many pay per views has Chisora headline? The headline one with Dylan White. And is this the second one on Sky? So, yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, David A, didn't they? Yeah, but that one, uh, Sky, were it? That were Frank Warren won it at Box Nation. Yeah, yeah. Well, either way, Chisora is fighting on his second Sky pay-per-view and he's never won a world title. And and, and his other pay-per-view weren't for a world title. And this is another Chisora fight that's not for a world title. And let's not forget, Usek and Chisora are both of them not even born in England and they're, they're, they're headlining in England on a pay-per-view. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. and then message... Well, Chisora's them, never... Two seen. seconds, two seconds. Last time I said that, I got loads of comments off people saying, you can't say that, he's registered as British. Look, if you're not born in Britain, you're not British, right? If I go to China tomorrow and I get a Chinese passport and I, I register as a China... He don't mean to say I'm a Chinaman, does it? Uh, if you're not born in Britain, you're not British. So all these people who keep saying I'm British, listen, look, if you're not born here, you're not British. Take that how you want to take it, but... I feel very passionate about my country. And it's like all these people who keep saying, oh, he's my brother and this and that. Little things like this, Charlie, fucking annoy me. You know mm. what I mean? People saying things like, he's my relative or he's my brother, when they're not, annoys me. And that that one annoys me about, you know, people coming over here and they're getting British passports and they're not here. You may have a British passport, but it don't mean you're British. So anyway, I've got that off my chest. Yeah, go on, you were saying. Uh, Pass well with Chisora. You say he ain't won a world title. He's not even won a European, Russ. Chisora has got a European title on his record. Who did he beat? I forgot who he beat, but he lost it against Tyson Fury, British Commonwealth and European. So, yeah, I think he's, he might have a couple of European wins on his record, Chisora. But, yeah, British Commonwealth, European and a world title challenger. But, like I said, he's never won a world title. But and he's had and like I said, he keeps getting pay per views willy nilly and blah de blah. They keep cantering to him, don't they? Because he always does some off at Cuff, doesn't he? At press conferences and that. But let's talk about skill sets. He's not world level Chisora, is he? He's a European level fighter on the slide, and that's who's up against mm. up against a world guy now. But this world guy is up against. He's only had one heavyweight fight, and he's not a heavyweight champion, is he? So is what it isn't. Uh, I do I want mean, I do want to mention about Spencer Fear and somebody sent me a tweet from Spencer Fear and earlier having a dig at Sky Sports with with some of Joel Gallagher said in an interview. Spencer, I know you're watching Spencer. Let me just say this: when you were at Sky Sports, Spencer Fear, and you was hanging out of the back of anything to do with Sky or Matchroom, now that you're not at Sky Sports, well. Look at you putting clips of Joe Gallagher's video on your on your uh, on your Twitter. That's really that's. If, if we were still doing Weapon at Week, Spencer, I'd pick you for Weapon at Week for that. All right, because like I said, you had your nose on the trough at Sky long enough, didn't you, Spencer? All right, just for let let you know, Spencer X. Yeah, go on. You were saying, Charlie. I just want to ask, are you still fighting, Spencer? If he wants to get it on with me, he can get it on with me at £200. Spencer, come see me. So, Joe, you know Russ, I just want to check his or his record because I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I've checked it earlier and he had one a European. Yeah, what's it say? 
Oh. By the way, if Chisora does lose next week, will we see him on another pay per view again? Yeah, of course we will. Yeah, they'll, they'll save him up for Dylan White at some stage for a trilogy. You know what I mean? And they'll call it once and for all the, the, the final chapter of some, or World War Three or some, you know, or two worlds collide, a yeah. Jamaican and a Zimbabwean. Two worlds collide, two continents collide. Isn't that right? <laughs> Beans. Yeah, Joe, I've just checked, Russ. He never won a European. Oh, Chisora didn't win a European. No? Never won it. He, he boxed Caballel, Pulev and Fury and lost who, all three. Who did, he, who did he defend against Tyson Fury? Let me get it up now. I'm sure he did, you know. Uh, Derek... Box trick ain't loading, but I'm looking at another page and it says he never won it. Let's have a look. No, no, he didn't. I thought he won a European. Oh, vacant European heavyweight title against Edmund Gerber. 21st of September 2013. Gerber was. 20, oh, he did get. 23 and 1. I knew I were right. I was trying to work with mate. My bad. So, you're fucking casual. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's me in the casual club now, Ross. You had me going, <laughs> and I thought that my brain weren't working. But yeah, she's all a British Commonwealth European champion. And a world title challenger against Vitaly Klitschko for the WBC. So yeah. you'd say that he's done well for his career, but I think Tyson Fury ruined him after the second fight. And I think just since then, it's been about money for him. I don't think he's bothered about belts. Same as Dylan White. You can't, belts don't pay for your retirement, do they? Not right to look at, but. Well, Derek is isn't he? Hey? Eh? Chisora openly says that now, doesn't he? He's all about the money. Doesn't give a shit about belts. Yeah. Yeah, he probably, he probably, he probably don't. He probably don't give a shit. He probably, he probably don't, mate. He probably don't. Hey, we'll have a, we'll have a bit of a change so, there for you. We'll have a bit of a change. Change of scenery. In fact, I don't even like that one. So, is that about it then? Is that all you've got for me? I'll try to ask last question, Russ. One. Who's your top three trainers? Okay, and top three trainers at the moment. Uh, Shane McGuigan, Sean Hagen, O'Hagan, uh, Mark Tibbs. Mark Tibbs. On a, on, on I agree, my, yeah, my three. I mean, Mark Tibbs uh, never had any... Had, I can't remember the last time he had a defeat as a trainer. Uh, Sean Awag and what he's done with Warrington nobody's seen that in boxing they, they've done brilliant and what he's done with Maxi Hughes has been good and Shane McGuigan for me he's top at pile I know there's a lot of trainers who I know out there are going to say you didn't mention me or blah de blah but I, I just think that uh, that's my top three trainers and then you'd have to you'd have to say you could put McCracken in that mix, couldn't you? But when you're gifted Olympic gold medalists, it's and 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 yeah. they've had hand picked opponents, you know. I mean, what's McCracken done for Joshua Boatsy? I mean, they're all saying he's not the real deal now, aren't they? So Mick Wales is a good trainer from Barnsley, but he's only he's only trained Josh and Dempsey, hasn't he? and and the uh, Gwyn. So he's tra he trains a few other people, but he's he's mainly concentrates in Barnsley. He doesn't or himself outright country, do you know what I mean? But uh, I don't know. I mean, you could say Dominic Ingle, Dave Colwell, Tony Sims, they'd all be mixed, wouldn't they, I suppose? John Pegg. There'd be loads of trainers I've missed out uh, and people say, you've missed so-and-so. I thought Chris Smedley were going strong with Liam Cameron, but it all fizzled out, didn't it? Liam got a four-year ban, but 
I think it's the fighter that makes the trainer myself. That's my opinion. Yeah. I mean, a couple, a couple of years back, people probably would have said Joe Gallagher. Yeah, well, Joe Gallagher's a great trainer as well. I missed him off. And what about Adam Booth? Go to Adam Booth. He's the best. Richard Towers is doing well with Cash Alley, but Richard's, uh, you know, he's inexperienced at the moment. He's got to get experience. Uh, Glenn Rhodes, he's been around years. Glenn Rhodes, 30-odd years he's been training, but he hasn't won a British title yet. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. but it is what it is. And, I'll tell you a story about that. 2008, well, I was in secondary school, right? And uh, we had these four people come in. One of them was a millionaire. One of them was a sports coach, Shane McGuigan. And I forget who the other two were. I can't remember, right? And more or less everyone wanted to talk to a millionaire. It was just like a, what's it called? A talk thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was really, I just started getting it at the time. So I, wanted to, I thought I'd pick Shane McGuigan. Really nice kid, got talking to him, gave me advice, career advice, whatever. Anyway, as I was going, he went to me, I'm going to write a name down for you. And I want you to remember the name. This kid's going to go places in boxing. And the name he wrote down on a piece of paper was Carl Frampton. Yeah. And look how it ended and up for them. From then onwards. Yeah. And from then onwards, that's when I sort of started to follow boxing through that sort of meet, proper meeting with Shane McGuigan and mentioning Carl Frampton. Yeah, but look. But yeah, if you, I say you look at Shane McGuigan, Taylor, Carl Frampton. How they ended up, though, in end. He's got a coli they, they all fell out, didn't they? Well, that's. I, 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 I won't mention it on here, but we all sort of know why at the moment, don't we? Well, I, well only what we've read in papers. Your sound's not very good on this, is it? It keeps missing. Sorry, mate. For the next one, I'll do it on my phone. All right, then. Yeah, no problem. All right. All right, then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. Uh, we've had, well, how long have we been on? Just over an hour, aren't we? Uh Thank yeah. you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure to have you on, Charlie, making your Porky's Corner debut. That's uh, something to tell your mates about that pub, isn't it? Yeah, cool. Too. All right, then, <laughs> mate. Well, listen, you take care and all the best, mate. All right? Peace out. Russ, I hope you and the family well. Take care. Cheers, mate. Bye. See you, mate. Bye. Bye. Uh, that was... Uh, Charlie Pritchard from North London, Islington, on Bricktop's turf. So I hope you enjoyed it. It's just something to uh, kill a bit of Sunday time with. It's, uh, what time is it now? Half past eight. I've missed Asylum, haven't I, again? I'll have to catch that tomorrow. Uh, so I want to get a bath and get to bed. Uh, all right, so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. If anybody's got a problem with anything I've said on here, come see me. All right, don't be sending stupid comments like little girls hiding behind your troll accounts. Come see me, but uh, so all right, peace out. <laughs>